back to your feel good breakfast show and also another installment of the culinary hotline bling ding 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 and of course we are joined by one of our favorites chef clem he is joining us this morning and we need to put this debate about hashtag rinse your mince to an end what do you say yeah, I think so. Like, really, like it's, because it's, it's since I think it's been three weeks now, and I'm still getting DMs about it. We're still getting messages on our Facebook page. People are really passionate about this rinse or not to rinse thing. Well, the thing is, when I put a personal poll up on my social media, it was almost 50 50. So yeah. clearly, they, it, there are some people that do it and there are some people that don't. So we, if you have any questions for Chef Clem on all things regarding the kitchen and you need some help getting out of those sticky conundrums, why don't you give us a call right now? That number is 21 552 Now, Chef Clem, we do have a question that came through on social media. And so before we get started, we want to actually go through some of your favorite comments that came through regarding the battle of rinsing your mints. Now, Barbita Carson, she said on Facebook, Zoe, I'm with you, thank you. Um, I rinse my mints all the time. Never have I used unrinsed mints. See, thank you. Thank you, I'm not the only one. Okay, can my question be, why? Why do you rinse your mints? Because I have, that's how I was taught. In the kitchen. <laughs> you don't We're laughing with questions. you. We're <laughs> laughing with you because I like learning. And like the thing about being in a kitchen and being a chef, you never stop learning. And as soon as you feel like you've learned it all, you're done. Actually, then you're not even involved anymore. But can I tell you? So, I mean, okay, we are going to get to the beautiful yes. mints in front of me. But I mean, like you, the mints you buy from Woolies is so beautiful that I feel guilty when I just put it straight into the pan and I didn't rinse it. Okay, so. Honestly, and okay, we'll talk about the whole debate as to why people are doing it because I really want to know why people do rinse the mints, but just you, you don't need to rinse your mints. You don't need to rinse your mints at okay. all. If there is a little bit of that, um, little bit, call it blood at the bottom of your dish, just pour it out. If your mint seems a little damp, all you can do is literally leave it uncovered in the fridge. We know that the fridge is a dehydrator and mm. it'll just dry off all the little bits of moisture on the outside. But you never need to rinse your mints. Especially, let's talk about some of the type of mints we have. We've got beef, we've got chicken, and we've got pork. Would you rinse, I'm just asking, would you rinse chicken mints and pork mints? No, because I've actually never cooked with them, but I, I haven't. I, I don't know why it is. I just always felt the need to rinse the beef mints. Okay, you don't, you don't need to, but I'm not telling people to stop. Because, I mean, that's just like, you know, people might have their reasons for doing it, so yeah. that's fine, but I'm saying you just don't need to. Okay, well, one, what is one of our viewers, Vivian Swartz, on Facebook commented, and she agrees with you. She says, I don't wash my mints. Once one washes clothes, then what do you have left to cook with? That's the big question I think a lot of people are asking. But she is also saying, that's why someone's mince pie tasted like fish once. Like I couldn't figure it fish. out what it was. I said, it was such a nice pie, and then she said, no, it's mince, lol. Lol. Okay. I feel like there was something wrong with the spices your friend used. Another reason you don't to want do to... Nothing to do with of the mints. <laughs> okay, take a call. Take Let's that call, call, please. This is the culinary hotline. Bling, Zoe speaking. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> what is your question for Chef Clem? No, my dear. I just want to say, I do rinse my mints. Oh, my gosh. What is your name? Kamira. Kamira, I love you. Thank you for joining <laughs> Team Zoe and rinsing the mints. Yes, I do. I'm, I'm already 71, my dear, and I'm rinsing my mints. And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Okay, my dear. You, you, you do and that. Can you... I just ask you, who told you to rinse your mints? Your mom? My mom. I'm already 71 and I'm still doing it. And you're teaching your kids to do the same? Yes. Okay, now the big question I get asked all the time is why? Yeah, because you were taught like that, my dear. Thank you, thank you. I am with Hamira on this. Okay, well, there we have it. I really, really appreciate you calling the culinary hotline bling. Okay, I'm not the only one. Do you know you can sometimes, this is weird, you can sometimes tell someone cooks good food by the way that they talk and the way that they sound? She sounds like she cooks some seriously good food. Yeah. Wow, she okay, knows cool. what she's talking about. Okay, so here's another reason I say that it's not good to rinse your mints. So if you're trying to get a serious sear on a piece of meat, the one thing that is your enemy is moisture. Mm. Because as soon as that moisture hits the pad, it's gonna start steaming instead of browning. So if you're doing things like burgers, which we're gonna make in a little bit, if you got excess water on there, the, the first contact that piece of mince, that mince ball has with the pan is just gonna cause it to steam and go gray. So taking out that moisture, not adding it, you get that perfect crust 
on your burger. So that's another reason. Okay. Well, okay, go quickly back to the chicken and the pork. Okay. People also rinse their chicken, wash their chicken. I'm not starting at the bit. I rinse my chicken before I use it. Okay, so you, I honestly think like 80% of people do, but the thing is you shouldn't, because why do you rinse it? In case there's like salmonella or anything on the outside. Just, just, just there's, there's that slimy... <laughs> Can someone fetch me a chair? Texture. I'm going to need to sit down for <laughs> this one. The chicken has a weird texture, so it just feels natural okay. to give it a rinse. Okay, so it's actually been proven that it's not good to rinse your chicken because when you're rinsing your chicken in your zinc or in the strainer, if there's any potential bacteria or salmonella on it, you're actually spreading it around your kitchen. So that's why they say actually don't rinse your chicken. I'm not getting into this because I can feel social media going grrrr. Just don't do it. Just don't it's do okay. it. It's okay. Okay. We're allowed to. This is the beauty of cooking. I, I love have this. Food I love this. No, no, no. I was only joking. Mind. Look, they actually brought me a chair. <laughs> wow. I was only joking. But you know what? I'm gonna keep on standby because I'm feeling weak <laughs> in the knees. Okay. Just joking. Should we cook something? Yes, please. Okay. Should so we're gonna make a smash burger. So this is a really good recipe that uses. Okay. 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 We're okay. here for this. Culinary hotline bling, hello. Hello, is that Zoe? <laughs> this is Zoe speaking. Who am I speaking to? You are speaking to Rajini from Durban. Oh, how are and, you today? Uh, I'm very well, and uh, we love your program so much. And uh, I do rinse my mints. Another one? Hello? See? Okay, I'm gonna Thank be, you, uh, the majority are coming through, so can the, can the, the no mince rinses maybe call in? Graham's passed out in the background, he's on the floor, he's I, not happy. But can hello? I ask, why do you also rinse your mints? Is it because you were taught to rinse your mints? Yes, I thought because of the redness of the blood, and I rinse it off. I leave it in a colander. Yes! As soon as it drains out, then I use it for cooking. That's how I do it. And you know what, it's amazing, he's sitting yeah. down. It's amazing for, especially when I'm someone that loves cooking mince dishes. I yeah. feel like mince is very frugal in the sense that you can Absolutely. get so many. So I always add a little bit of paste and a little bit of tomato and a little bit of, there's always moisture being added to it. So I've mm. never had any issues with rinsing my mince and then cooking with it. All right, and that's perfectly good. I'm gonna actually ask you next, not next week, maybe the week after, if you could actually cook us a little mince dish. I wanna okay. see what Zoe makes. I'll make a speciality. But a good thing about mince, we'll talk about it in the next segment, is the fact that you can add so much flavor to it. Mm. And you can make it your own. You can take it through any cuisine in the world to make it like a, an amazing mince dish. I feel like every cuisine in the world has a mince recipe. We've got fricadels, we've got mince curry. We've, we've got, got babuati. We've got babuati. So it's absolutely amazing. They can take one ingredient and spread it across the whole world. Okay, wanna talk about what's going on here? Yes, let's see, those so, are looking really good. We're making smash burgers. So it's so simple. It's literally just got a little bit of salt and pepper in the mince. Very important, you wanna start with your mince cold. The more you work with mince when it's warm, you kind of develop that gumminess and that, that you end up eating a hockey puck. Oh, I like see. a chewy, chewy patty, you don't want that. If you're working with mince and it's cold, it prevents that from happening. Okay, so, so, salt and so pepper. you also don't want it room temperature. So rather no. straight from the fridge into the... No, 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 you can actually let your mince sit like you do when you, when you take a steak out the fridge, you let it for half an hour. Okay. You can actually do that, perfectly fine. So what we're doing is I've formed them into little balls and I've added the balls to our pan. So the pan was quite hot. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for some of that fat to come out of the, the, the mince like it has right here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna smash it. And here's the thing, people smash twice. You should not smash twice, smash once. Let me see how you smash. Okay, cool. So if you want a little, you can use a silicone spatula as well. You can, some people use two spatulas because then it doesn't stick to this guy. What I like to do is you can add a little bit of oil to the bottom of your... A little bit of spray, spray. A little bit of spray, spray, spray. There That's we good. Go. There we go. You ready? So all you're going to do is once you've got that nice little seal of fat, you're going to smash down one. Look at that. That's it. And you're going to smash down the other one. So the reason you smash is because you're pressing down the mince onto that very hot pan and you're going to form that crust. The mistake people make is once they form that crust, they turn it over and they smash again. Oh, okay. You shouldn't smash twice because the second time you smash, you're gonna push out all the juiciness out of the burger that you've worked so hard to lock inside that burger. It's all gonna come running out. Okay, but you still flip it, right? This is not a sunny side oh, up. Oh, it's not a sunny side up <laughs> burger. You're gonna flip it. So just like a steak, and that's basically what mince is. It's a steak, it's been ground. So it's, it loves seasoning. Salt and pepper, I've seasoned it, and then I've seasoned again on the top. That's gonna help us get some nice color on there as well. The salt actually helps you get that nice caramelization. 
Oh. You see I'm passionate about burgers? You're I can talk a lot, about eh? Food. That's why you're a chef. Well, listen, the culinary hotline is not going anywhere because this is why Chef Clem is here. So if you have any culinary conundrums that you need some help sorting out, give us a call right now. That number is 021-110-5552. And join us after shortly for the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. Yeah. See you in a bit.